Want to see how you can get a super cheap gaming GPU? Well, stick around. So it's no secret that ever since the crypto mining crash, there's been tons of GPUs flooding the market. The only problem with these GPUs is that they're mostly made for mining and therefore only have either one port or no ports at all. But what if I told you there was a super easy way to play games on these graphics cards? It's a super easy way just to change one setting in Windows and one setting in your BIOS. You don't even need to change your BIOS or put any modifications on at all. But first, let's go through why you might want to do this. So first and foremost is that these cards can cost up to 50% less than the equivalent ports versions. That in itself is a huge saving. And secondly, if you've got a DVI only card, then you're limited to a max resolution of about 2560 by 1600. Also, there may not be any audio from DVI. And if you've got a card with no ports, then you've got no choice. So here's how you play games without using any of these ports. So firstly, turn on your PC and smash the delete key until you get into the BIOS, and then go into an advanced mode. The next steps will vary by motherboard to motherboard, but you want to find something called System Agent Configuration or similar. Then you want to click on the Graphics Configuration, and then you want to change the primary display to iGPU or Integrated Graphics. If your motherboard or CPU does not support Integrated Graphics, then this will not work. Once you're done, save and shut down the PC. Now plug in your graphics card and the power connector. Connect your video cable to your motherboard and turn on your PC. Go to Device Manager and if you've done everything correctly, then you should see two display adapters, one being your graphics card and one being your integrated graphics. Now all you've got to do is go to Start and type in Graphics Settings. Click Browse to find your game. And for Steam games, you want to go to the local disk C drive, Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then choose your game, and then find the .exe file. Then select Add. Now what you want to do is click Options, and then choose the High Performance option for your GPU. Now, when we play a game that we've added, we can see the dedicated graphics cards in the options. And we get good performance in games. So the question that I have now, and maybe you guys have too, is does it affect performance? So for this test, we're going to use this graphics card with just the one DVI port. First, we're going to test it in the Windows options, and then we're going to test it using the DVI port. And we can find out if there's any performance differences. So in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at high settings 1080p, the Windows setting card going through the motherboard achieved 42.2 FPS, whereas when we used the GPU that was using the DVI port, we got 48.6 FPS. The 1% lows were 24.2 and 30.8 respectively, this shows quite a considerable performance difference of about 15%. This is honestly more than I was expecting, but I still feel like using the graphics card with the Windows Power option is worth it. But let's see in some other games. Okay, next up we're using GTA 5 on the highest settings with MSAA x4. GTA gave us a very respectable 56.4 FPS when routing through the motherboard's ports, and 58.2 FPS when using the DVI port. So this shows that in some games the differences are even lower, although using the DVI port still comes on top when it comes to the FPS. This is even more apparent when we look at the 1% and 0.1% lows of the test. The 1% low of the test using the motherboard's ports is 39.2 FPS in comparison to 39.7 when using the DVI port. And the 0.1% low is actually lower when using the DVI port at just 37 compared to 38.2. Next up we got Red Dead Redemption 2 on Ultra Settings, 1080p. In Red Dead using the motherboard's ports, we got 21.9 FPS compared to 23.3 FPS using the DVI port. So as for the 1% and 0.1% lows, we got 9.9 FPS and 9 FPS for the motherboard ports, and 17.4 and 13.7 when using the DVI port. Here, the 1% and 0.1% lows suggest there's some stuttering in the motherboard ports test, although neither performed great with these settings. Ideally, it would have been better to turn down the settings from ultra to maybe high. The average frame rate between the two was, however, very, very close. Okay, so now we've got Resident Evil 3 and we've got it on high-ish settings. Resident Evil 3 at these settings always seems to form quite well on older hardware, and we should be able to see a noticeable difference in FPS between the two tests, if there is any. So, for the motherboard ports test we got an average of 134.5 FPS, whereas the DVI port test gave us 170.6 FPS. So this is quite a bit of a jump in performance difference, and it would be less noticeable if at higher settings. 
The 1% and 0.1% lows also reflect this with the motherboard ports test having a 1% low and a 0.1% low of 86.1 and 5.2 FPS respectively. In comparison to the DVI test which gets 114.9 and 7.4 FPS respectively. Both cards had a pretty low 0.1% lows so the occasional stutter is not really due to the ports you're using so that's also good to know. So I think it's interesting to know what may be causing these lower performance differences. And to be honest, I don't actually know why. Even from some quick Google searching, I'm not really sure. But my guess is that there's more latency when you have to go through the motherboard to the port, whereas going just straight through the graphics card is a lot easier. Overall, however, I think it's a great way to save lots of money on your graphics card. You can save up to 50% by buying one of these cards and it still performs great. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe.